My definition of preaching in two words is expository exaltation. That's E-X-U-L-T-A-T-I-O-N, not E-X-A-L. I'm exulting over what I've seen by exposition. That's what I mean by putting those two words together. So in this session, I want to talk about what I mean by expository, and then we'll do exaltation in another one. What is expository? What I mean by expository is that aspect or dimension of the sermon or the message which manifestly brings the meaning out of the text and makes it plain for the people. Manifestly brings the meaning out of the text and makes it plain for the people. Now, defining expository that way has several implications. Number one, every sermon is built on, based on, draws its message and points from biblical texts, one or more. Now notice, I'm not defining expository as a way of preaching that works verse by verse through a book of the Bible. Lots of people think, okay, by expository preaching, he means take Romans preach it week after week until he's done with 250 sermons, which is what I did. I preached 250 sermons on Romans, taking one or two verses at a time. That is not what I mean by expository preaching. I don't care how many texts you have or where they come from in the Bible. You can have one text, you can have ten texts. Two, here's expository. Are you manifestly bringing the meaning, real, authentic meaning of those texts out for the people to engage their hearts with clarity so that they know that's what that text means? So expository simply means we are expositing texts, getting meaning manifestly out of texts. Now here's the second implication. When I say meaning, manifestly bringing meaning out of biblical passages, by meaning, I mean the reality that the author, God and the human author, intended to communicate to people. The reality. They're not just putting words together so that we can see grammatical structures and explain them. They are intending to communicate reality through words. And we have not done our exposition until we have made use of the words and the phrases and the logic of the text to get through them to the reality, put that in our words and press it into the hearts of our people with understanding so that they grasp the reality, encounter the reality of the texts. Let me illustrate. Let's take Colossians chapter 1, uh, verses 4 and 5, where Paul says, um, we, we have heard of your faith and the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Now, love for the saints because of hope laid up for you in heaven. And you may be reading that, and as you're preparing your message, you notice, and indeed you should notice, that love is grounded, with the word because, in hope. And you point that out to the people, and you say, let's love each other. And the Bible says love happens because it's rooted in hope, so let's hope in what's laid up for us in heaven. And you haven't yet said anything about what is love? 
what is this strange and wonderful thing? What are, what are these people being expected to do and to feel? You haven't said anything yet about what is hope? What does it feel like? Our people hear these words all the time and they don't have any meaning in them that's really clear and deep and life-changing. They didn't know you, what you mean by hope, what you mean by love. And when it says love happens because of hope and you just point that out and you leave them hanging, what they want to know is how in the world does hope give rise to love? It's not working in my marriage. Because we haven't dealt with reality yet. Through the word love to the reality of what that is. Through the word hope to the reality of what that is. And through the word because until you have figured out biblically and experientially how in the world does it work psychologically at 10 o'clock tonight in the midst of conflict at home. Hope is going to help me love. This is what makes preaching live is when you deal with reality, not just surface structures of here's a word we're all familiar with, here's a word we're all familiar with, here's a because we're all familiar with. Isn't it great to see the logical connection? End of sermon. No. These people are dealing with reality, and this text is dealing with reality, and your job in exposition is to manifestly bring the meaning slash reality out of the text. Here's the third implication. The structure of the text and the logic governs your sermon structure, but doesn't define it as identical. In other words, let me try to illustrate it. The, the text says they love the saints because they hope in heaven. Now there's the structure. That doesn't mean the sermon has to have point one, love. Point two, the ground. Point three, hope. That'd be the flow that Paul wrote. You can turn it upside down. You can preach on hope. You can turn that because into a therefore, and you can preach on love is the final point. So I'm saying the logical structure of the text governs what you say, but it's not identical with what you say. So expository or exposition doesn't mean um, wooden mimicking of the order of a text. You just have to get at the reality of the text, the reality behind the text, see how the structure of the text brings that reality out, then you can, in your sermon, structure it whatever way would be helpful for your people. And the last implication of this definition of expository is manifestly bringing meaning out of the text is the word manifestly, meaning your people need to see how you got your points from the Bible. And here is where I would just plead with preachers. Because frankly, over and over again, as I travel around, as I listen to younger preachers, they have poured out their hearts in prayer and study to get this text rightly understood. They've seen wonderful things. They start telling them to their people. And, and the people are sitting there fumbling around with their Bibles, trying to, trying to listen to what he's saying, trying to find it in the text, and he's not helping them. He's just saying good things. And they're trying to find, no, I, I think that became from the word because. I, I think he's getting the, the nature of hope from heaven, but he, I can't. And they can't, do, they can't follow you carefully. They can't look at their text unless you help them. So I'm pleading, I'm pleading with preachers Show the people where in the very wording of the text they're getting their points. And here are the two reasons why that is so important. Number one, that's your authority, not your ideas. And you're going to train your people to trust your voice, not this text, if they can't see the connection. That's not good. We need to help them 
see the connection for the sake of reposing authority in the Bible, not in the preacher. And the, the second reason is it trains them how to read their Bibles. It trains them how to see for themselves what's there so that they're loving what you're doing as you unfold this text. So expository exaltation means, first part, expository. The dimension of the sermon that is manifestly bringing meaning, that is, reality out of this text, finding words that make it clear for your people, digging into your people's lives and the reality they're dealing with, and bringing those two realities together in a life-changing moment that, Lord willing, is going to lead to exaltation, not only in the preacher, but also in the people. That's what we talk about next time.